Welcome back to the channel everyone and if you're new here my name is Victor and today I'm back with the Cinema 4D tutorial. Today we'll be covering the 3D car driving effect seen in size that that music video featuring Suga. Alright, even though this is a Cinema 4D tutorial, we're going to start in After Effects so that we can 3D camera track our scene. So for my scene, I just went into my backyard and filmed towards the fence and just started walking backwards. So in After Effects, open up the tracker panel and then select Track Camera and then let it solve for the scene. Then you're going to triangulate three points that are about in the area where you want that car and then right click and then Create Solid in Camera. And then just go and hide your footage and go to File, Export, Max on Cinema 4D Exporter. You're now going to save and name this as a Cinema 4D project. Now before we leave After Effects, you're going to want to reveal your footage and then just go ahead and hide the camera and the track solid and then we're going to go to File, Export, Render Queue. Select the output module, it might say lossless, it might say high quality, and then change the format to JPEG sequence. And you're going to create a new folder and location for all those JPEGs and then go ahead and render it out. Alright, you can close down After Effects and then locate that Cinema 4D project that we just created and open it up. So now you should see basically a blank video, but you've got some camera movement and you've got that track solid in there. So now we're going to create a new background and then you're going to create a new material and then in the color channel, you're going to open up that JPEG folder that we just created and then select just that first JPEG, but make note of how many JPEGs that you have. So in my case, it goes up to 77. Select open and then hit no. And then click on the image for the texture and in the animation tab, change the movie end frame to 77 for the 77 JPEGs. Now with our material still open, you're gonna click on viewport and then check the box that says animate preview. Now when we get out of that and you play through, you should see that the background is moving so that we can see what is actually happening. So then I just changed my renderer to Redshift and I just learned this recently that if you have Cinema 4D, you now have access to Redshift for free. In the render settings, I scaled down from 4K to 2K. I then changed the format to PNG and then checked on Alpha Channel. All right, now in the Objects Manager, I go to File, Merge Objects and select the Porsche that I got for free on CG Trader. I put that Porsche into a null object and then I went to that Track Solid and selected the X, Y, and Z coordinates, copied them, and pasted them into that null object's X, Y, and Z coordinates. You can do that easily just by highlighting the coordinate, Command C to copy, go to where you want to paste it, click Command V, then you'll paste it. I then scaled up my null object because it was super small and then rotated the car to face the direction I wanted it to drive. So now we're gonna animate the rotation of the wheel and you might run into this problem as well where you go to change the pitch on the wheel but the axis is not in the center of the wheel. So when you go to rotate it, it makes this huge loop instead of spinning right from the center. So in that case, we're going to select that wheel and then go up to the top to tools axis, axis center, and right now the action is axis two, which is what we want, so go ahead and click execute. So now that axis should be in the center of the wheel, so when you change the pitch, it will rotate perfectly, but now with that window still up, you're going to select all the other wheels and do the exact same thing. And the only reason I did it to the wheels that we can't see was just in case you could see a little glimpse and you could tell that it wasn't moving. It was probably unnecessary, but I just didn't want to render it and then be like, like, oh great, now you can see that you know this side's not moving. Now let's bring in a dome light and start the progressive renderer. In the object settings of the dome light, we're going to drag in an HDRI. I got this one for free on Polyhaven. I then increased the saturation to better match the scene and then turned off the background. Now we're just going to quickly create redshift materials for everything on the car that we can see. And normally when you're creating materials, you'd like to take some time to add scratches or surface blemishes, smudges, what have you. But in a case like this when the car is going to be zooming by, why waste the time doing all of that when no one's going to be able to tell anyway? That's a huge thing with VFX and 3D is don't spend a bunch of time on something that's just going to get covered up or completely unnoticed anyway. So I started by creating a redshift car paint and adding it to parts of the car and changing that color to blue. I then created a material for the tires and brought in the textures from textures.com. I brought in the roughness, normal, and albedo. The albedo gets plugged into the diffuse color 
the roughness gets plugged into the reflection roughness, and the normal map gets plugged into a bump map. But when you plug in the normal map, you have to go to texture input and then click on the bump map and change it to tangent space normal from height field. And then you plug it into the overall bump input. Now you've probably noticed this before, but when you add a material to a certain area, for example, like the car door, and we want the car door to be blue and then it also turns the window blue. Or when I added the material to the tires and it also changed the wheels to be a tire material. That problem can be solved if your model has polygon selection tags. The little triangle icons are polygon selection tags and if you have a good model, they will be all labeled but if you don't, you'll just have to guess and some models don't have them at all. So with your material selected, you drag the appropriate polygon selection tag into the selection of the material which is found in the tag tab. I then proceeded to just continue to create redshift materials to cover all parts of the Porsche that we can see. So once the axis is in the middle, you can turn on the pitch keyframes and rotate the pitch throughout the duration of the movement. And then go to window timeline dope sheet and select those keyframes and change it to a straight line rather than the Bezier interpolation. Also, after you added that dome light, you probably noticed that in your perspective view, the Porsche went all black and you can change that just by going to display and constant shading. So now we're gonna animate the Porsche to drive in from the right side of the frame and then out through the left side of the frame. So I just moved the X position to the right and then turned on the keyframes and moved to the end of the clip and moved the X position all the way to the left and then set another keyframe. I later changed the duration of those keyframes to be about 20 frames long rather than 77 because I needed it to be a quick zoom by. Again, go to window timeline dope sheet and change those position keyframes to be a straight line rather than the Bezier because we don't want it to look like the Porsche is getting up to speed as it gets in frame and then it's like getting on the brakes or something like that. We don't want that. We want constant speed. Something that's always important with 3D is marrying your object with the landscape. So you do that by creating a shadow. So now we're going to create a new plane, make sure it's big enough to cover the entirety of that frame. And then I double click that bubble on the top to turn it red and hide it from my perspective view. But now you can see that we have a shadow cast on that plane. But before I forget, on that dome light, you can change the rotation however you want and that will change the lighting and reflection. So that will change where that shadow is happening. Now, typically you wouldn't want to really change where the sky is because of the reflections and whatnot, but I'm trying really hard to match the shadows in my scene and using that as reference to get the same angle. But now we're going to right click on that plane and go to redshift tags and get the redshift object tag. And then click on that object tab and go over to matte. You're going to click override and on general click enabled and then enable the shadow as well. Now we can't see the plane but we do have the shadow and you can change the color and transparency as well. Now I unclick the background on that dome light and then I added an area light and spent a little bit of time tweaking it so I could try and get that shadow to be elongated going the correct direction. Now I spent way too many hours trying to render this with motion blur and for some reason I have no idea why Redshift would give me a couple frames that had the weirdest motion blur, whether it looked like a car from Fast and Furious that just used its nitrous, or the car's right here on this frame, and now I've got a blue streak up top for some reason, a blue streak on the bottom, and it's just entering frame. The most frustrating thing. I updated Redshift hoping that was a problem, and Cinema 4D wasn't the problem. No idea. I did eventually get one render without a bunch of weird motion blur, but the motion blur was still just too intense. And when I refer back to the music video, they barely have motion blur on there, so I just scrap motion blur altogether. So before you render, choose a new folder and give your render a new name and make sure that it's set to render all frames. Now once that's done rendering, close Cinema 4D and open up After Effects again. We're going to import the PNGs. So you're going to locate your PNGs and only click on the first one and make sure the little box that says PNG sequence is clicked. And then go ahead and import all that into your project. Now you'll drag that sequence into the composition but you have to remember which frame that it started on. Mine was on frame 14, so I drug it to frame 14. And with mine, because I downloaded to 2K, I have to right click and then transform to comp width. Now at this stage, I also spent an ungodly amount of time trying to get realistic dust kick up from the car. And if I had to shoot this again, 
I would shoot it a lot tighter so that you don't see a lot of the interaction between the tire and the dust. And when I referred back to the music video, I realized that they were bringing the car in pretty close too. So before I even got to work on all that stuff, I just scaled up my footage and scaled up my car accordingly. So a quick rundown of how I got the dirt assets in there. I tracked the motion in the scene for the position, rotation, and scale and brought in three different dirt assets and parented them to that null object with the tracking data so that the dirt assets would be tracked into the scene. I went and alternated through those dirt assets along the duration of the car going through, filling up any gaps that I needed to to simulate dirt being kicked up. And then eventually those assets that I placed all had four layers of the same asset. The top layer would be the highlights of the dirt. So I created a mask to just be on the top half and made sure that was the brighter part. The second layer was the original dirt layer and I had some tint on there to make it brown. The third layer, instead of being on the screen blend mode, was on the normal blend mode so that I could then use a color key to key out the black just to make the dirt layer a little bit thicker. And then the fourth layer, was a shadow for our dirt. So in total, every dirt layer has four total layers. The highlights, the original layer, the layer to thicken it up, and then the shadow layer. And then that's it. That's how you do the 3D car driving effect in size that that music video featuring Suga. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, comment what you thought down below, and then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one.